Miss Collins, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? So help me God. I have never lied, Your Honor, as anyone who knows me will be glad to tell you. Miss Collins? Now, Miss Collins, will you kindly tell the court, in your own words, the true beginning of this case, the arrival of Victoria Winters at Collinwood? We were living at the old house then. We? My brother Joshua and Jeremiah. The late Jeremiah Collins. He would be alive today if that woman had not come to us. I object to this, Your Honor. Do you, sir? Well, no more than this, this noble family objects to the loss of one of its most illustrious members. The Collins family has my sympathy and Miss Winter's sympathy, and I'm sure the Indeed. sympathy Indeed! Gentlemen, gentlemen. Be seated, Mr. Bradford. Trask, no connection has been made between Miss Winters and Jeremiah Collins' death. It has not been established. We shall make that connection at the proper time. You may proceed, Miss Collins. On, on what actual date did Miss Winters first appear? It was October 12th. I remember because I made arrangements with our solicitor in Boston to send us a Miss Phyllis Wick. She came highly recommended. She was to arrive the 12th on the evening stage. And did Miss Wick arrive? She did not. And I, for one, hesitate to think what may have happened to her. Obviously, some evil force would not permit her to come. It may be obvious to you that some evil force did not permit Miss Wick's arrival. It also may be that just by chance, somewhere between Boston and here, she changed her mind. The stage overturned. And she is missing to this very day. Did you try to find her? Our solicitor in Boston, a very respectable man, made all inquiries. Mis You're... Mr. Bradford, you will have... Your Honor, she's trying to suggest that we must accept second-hand testimony. You will have your own opportunity to cross-examine this witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Miss Collins, will you tell us the details of Miss Winter's appearance? My nephew, Barnabas, a name, Your Honor, you shall hear many times in this trial, was to go to Collinsport to pick up Miss Wick. As he waited for his carriage, he saw coming toward him this, this creature. He'd never seen her before in his life, and she called him by name. Barnabas, she cried. Oh, Barnabas. He told you that he had never seen her before. Of course. But he came under her spell almost immediately. Oh, Judge. You should have seen the clothes she was wearing. There is an explanation for Miss Winter's clothes, Your Honor. You must not interrupt the testimony, Mr. Bradford. Proceed. My nephew, up to this time, a very nice young man, asked Miss Winters to come in to the house and with that gesture sealed his fate and that of so many of my beloved family. My sister-in-law, against my better judgment, insisted that Miss Winters be allowed to spend the night. That night began the reign of terror in our home. Your Honor, nothing has been established to connect Miss Winters' arrival and the subsequent events. Mm -hmm. Agreed. We shall attend to that connection now, Your Honor. Will you kindly tell the court the events of November 2nd? My brother Joshua was speaking with Jeremiah. <laughs> This is so difficult to explain. It's even more difficult to believe. While Jeremiah had his back turned, Joshua just disappeared. And in his place was a cat, the devil's animal. Now, several days later, I was in Miss Winter's room, and the cat was on her bed. Suddenly, there was this ungodly noise. The room was filled with smoke. I screamed. And there was Joshua before me. And the cat was gone. Did your brother have any memory of where he had been? None. Clearly, witchcraft had taken hold of our home. Quite clearly. Now, let us go into the reason you are so sure that Victoria Winters is a witch. Will you testify as to the exorcism of the old house at Collinwood? Gladly. I was convinced that Barnabas was under the spell of this witch and that he was hiding her there at the old house. Finally, he agreed to let you yourself, Reverend Trask, 
exorcised the old house. Your Honor, since it was the Reverend Trask who conducted this exorcism, I would like you to, for just for the moment, dismiss Miss Collins so that I may interrogate Mr. Trask on his actions on that day. I certainly have no objection, Your Honor. You may be excused, Miss Collins. Trask, you may take the stand. Another death more tragic than the last. My heart bleeds for this poor, unfortunate family. Will it ever end, this curse? Yes, it will end, but not until it has been destroyed at the source. I understand you perfectly, as long as Miss Winters lives. Every living soul is in mortal danger. Yours, mine. Yes. Why does that stupid judge prolong this needless trial? That girl is indisputably a witch. Why can't he see that? He, alas, does not have the clarity of vision that is the singular reward of the good and the truly just. Of course, she may well have some diabolical influence over him. No, I don't think it's anything as complicated as that. We both know that our first enemy is not the judge but rather that young upstart who insists on defending Miss Winters. Oh, if he only knew what he was doing. I have made repeated attempts to indicate his errors. Have you made it clear to him in no uncertain words? I have made the perils of his soul most vivid, I assure you. Yes, but have you made the hazards of this world clear as well. What do you mean? It's perfectly simple. His defense of Miss Winters is contrary to the best interests of the Collins family. That has been mentioned. It would bear repeating. If he expects to advance, he must remember that advancement is usually made with the assistance, not the opposition of the Collins family. He's a most stubborn young man. Stubbornness is a vice, dear Reverend, that I think it's your duty to eradicate. You want me to talk to young Bradford? You might go farther than mere talk. I believe I see my duty clearly. I shall look to it tonight. No, all of this would be unnecessary if only we could lay our hands on that book. I agree. Much as I shudder at the thought of touching something so, so obviously of the devil. Oh, to save us all, we must dare much. We must use every power at our command. We... Beg pardon, Miss Abigail. Mr. Joshua sent me with some more wood for the fire. You say Mr. Joshua sent you? I doubt it. He did, ma'am, I swear to it. No, Providence sent you, knowing that I had some very important questions to ask you. I haven't finished Mother Chores yet, Miss Abigail. My questions are few. I shall do my duty here, Reverend. I'm sure you will do yours. Indeed, good lady. And they shall be done with dispatch. Good night. Reverend. Ben? Yes, ma'am. I have a service to ask of you. Oh, yes, ma'am. A service that I'm sure it will please you to perform. Yes, ma'am. I ask you because I am certain of your devotion to the Collins family. Yes, ma'am. When the trial resumes, I want you to testify. Me, ma'am? I want you to tell the court what Miss Winters forced you to do. She didn't force me to do nothing. How she forced you to come to my room that night and steal that little piece of ribbon. She didn't. You said yourself the witch made you do it. Now, I heard that with my own ears. You could tell me, you can tell the court. I didn't mean that when I said it. You're lying. I'm telling the truth, ma'am, I swear to it. Ben! What is your work tonight? You know what it is, Miss Abigail. You are to dig the grave, is that true? Yes, ma'am. I have another task for you. I figure it'll take me most of the night. No, you can do it at the same time. It won't interrupt the other. I don't understand. 
As you dig the grave, remember its purpose to house the dead. And remember there are many paths to the grave, and a path can be found for you, filled with back-breaking punishment at that prison from which you came. So dig the grave and ponder my words. Where do you think you're going? Out for a walk. It's getting dark. I really don't understand you. I spent the entire morning looking for you. You did? Yes. A woman of my years, running around like a silly schoolgirl, hunting you. I could have had a seizure. What is that? Nothing. Well, if it's nothing, why did you bother to write it down on paper? Extra boots, five dollars, a hatchet. What is this, please? It's a list of things I want for my birthday. I never knew a young boy to want boots for his birthday. There's something more here. No, there isn't. Why can't I make a list? I've seen you. That's different. I'm grown up. Grown ups have to make lists. Because they can't remember anything. Your sister Millicent has not taught you to respect your elders. That's obvious. Now, come in here. I want to talk to you. I didn't spend the morning looking for you for nothing. Come on. If I come, will you give me my paper? I will not bribe you. It's mine. I only want to ask you about doing your duty. Now, you're not too young to do that. Well, it's your duty to give me what's mine, and that's mine. Very well. Now, come in. Sit down. Now, I want to ask you about this. That bracelet? You've seen it before, haven't you? I guess. Where? Is it Miss Winters? That's right. And why do you have it? Miss Winters is in jail, as you well know. This is evidence against her. No one else has a bracelet like this, full of heathen symbols. The devil himself is in it. I know. She showed us. What did she say about that? She said it was a devil. And did she ask you to get down on your knees and worship him? Who ever heard of getting down on your knees and worshiping a devil? Did you ask her about some of these other symbols? This crab-like creature? No. I don't believe you. Well, why would I lie? I hope you're not lying, because lying makes you a child of the devil. Now tell me, Daniel, I want to know what you and Sarah and Miss Winters talked about during the lessons. Well, she said that, that someday we'd be able to fly through the air. Fly? Yes, and we'd go six or seven hundred miles in an hour. Why didn't you come and tell me this immediately? Well, do you want to fly too? When the Lord sees fit to make me an angel, then I'll fly, not before. Now, what else did she tell you? I don't remember. Yes, you do. Well, she said that someday we wouldn't have to learn arithmetic anymore. And it would all be done by machines. And voices could go through the air. 
just by magic. And we turn a little knob and you could hear them. I didn't understand that. I understand that very well. Oh, Daniel, I want you tomorrow morning to go to Cullensport with me. Why? I want you to go to Miss Winter's trial and tell those judges exactly what you told me. Well, why should I do a thing like that? Because what she told you is not the truth. Well, maybe she was joking. Joking, you poor child. Well, besides, even if they are true, Sarah and I liked hearing about those things. And, and I like Miss Winters better than anyone else around here. Daniel! It's true. She was nice to us. She would played with us, and she let us play wherever we wanted. She wasn't always chasing me around like you, or telling me to go home like Ben. I don't have fun around here anymore. Well, there's a lot more to life than fun. Everyone's always picking on me. Why, Ben says I can't even go to the old house anymore. Ben said that? When? Today, this morning. Why? Why can't I go there anymore? Is it haunted? He said that? Is it? Was he in the old house? Yes. He had no reason to be. No reason at all. What was he doing there when you saw him? Unlocking a door. Locking a door. What door? The cellar door. We'll continue our little talk later. You mustn't go there, Cousin Abigail. It's getting dark out. The dark doesn't frighten me, Daniel. We each have an inner light we carry with us, as I hope you'll learn. Reverend Trask, I'll wait for him. Abigail, what are you doing here? Ah! You are dead. You thought you knew all about death, didn't you? Well, you were wrong. I know you are dead. Yes, but I am alive too. No one ever told you that was possible, did they? Stay away from me! Oh, I would if I could, Abigail. But you have made staying away from you impossible. No! No! I'm sorry, Abigail. I remember warning you once that it didn't always pay to know every secret. You laughed at me then. But you're not laughing now, are you? Your father! We'll never know. I will protect him. I will keep anyone from knowing. Just as if I had had the choice, I would have kept you from knowing. I don't understand. It has taken this to make you say those words. You always thought you understood everything. One could always count on a, well, I can't say logical, but an answer at least. I'm afraid the truth is that you didn't know very much about anything. You... you're not... It's a... it's a spell. 
That's it. The witch has cast a spell. I will go tell Miss Reverend Trask. He can do nothing. Uh, he can. Nothing whatsoever. Oh, please let him. Don't, don't just give in to the witch. I have given in, Abigail. Oh, I, I know, I know. You always, she had some power over you. And you always protected her. Without even knowing it. Oh, please. Evil spirits can be exorcised. Not anymore by anyone ever. Do you understand now? You are really dead. I admitted it. No, no, the witch just wants to terrify me. You are a vision. If you think I am a vision, touch me. The devil is testing my faith. Touch me. You are a vision. I am not. Ah! Feel this hand. Ah. Feel the flesh. Face the truth. For once you're going to. I won't believe what you say. You're going to hear it at least. You were right about one thing, Abigail. There was a witch in our house. Victoria Winters. Angelique. Angelique. Oh. The devil would expect me to believe that. She helped us. She thought you fools. She knew Trask had no real power. He has. He has. He'll come. I sent Ben for him, and he'll find you. He'll find neither of us. Oh, stay away from me, you devil. Don't touch me. Why does the devil always want to touch you? Why do you think that? I'm sure you're as wrong about him as you are about Miss Winters. I was not wrong about Miss Winters. I won't believe that Angelique was the witch. I am the way I am because I killed her. You killed her? Oh, you won't listen. I am the victim of her curse. No, none of this is true. Look at no, me. No, no. See what I am now. No. I will be alive for all eternity. Lies, lies, all lies. You don't believe anything I have told you. You are a ghost who was sent to haunt me. Why? Why were you sent? To tell you the truth, I will kill. No. I will do anything to stop from being discovered. I told you to look at me, Abigail. See what I am. I won't. I won't. I won't. I won't. You will. to do? What am I going to do? No! Cousin Naomi! Daniel! Cousin Naomi! This way. He isn't far. Somebody! Somebody, please, come! Ben! Anybody, come! Oh, Cousin! Oh, Daniel! I'm, I'm so worried about you. You all right? Look! Abigail! 